Welcome friends, it is Sunday morning, so we're going to do another one of our regular sort of depression era recipes out of depression era recipe cookbooks. Uh, and today we're working from the Chicago Daily News cookbook. And if you've seen the thumbnail or read the video title, you know we're making creamed brains. So these are the brains. Um, I haven't cooked a lot with brains, I don't eat a lot of brains. So we're gonna see how this works out. I know a lot of people have been complaining that the recipes that I do from the depression era don't seem like depression recipes. And I think the thing that you really have to remember is that for a lot of these cookbooks, all of the recipes are aspirational. These are the things that people want to eat um, rather than what they have to eat. And I think this is one of these recipes where probably there were people that had to eat this. So the first step, it says to boil them. Um, it doesn't say for how long or what to do with them. So I've got some boiling water and in they go. Okay, so I think the brains are cooked. But um, they're a little bit hot yet. I also need to make a white sauce. So I'm gonna move on to making the white sauce. And in order to make this sauce, it's essentially just a roux, which is butter and flour. And once the butter is melted, in goes the flour. Equal amounts of butter and flour. And we just stir that together to cook it a little bit. And once that's cooked together nicely, we put in some milk. So we need about two cups of milk. Okay, we'll just let this cook. It will thicken as it cooks. Now, we come back to the brains. We need to chop them up fine and then fry them. So, uh, they're cool enough to handle at this point. Let's chop. Um, yeah, it doesn't take much to chop them. So in the bottom of this frying pan, I'm going to melt a little bit of butter. Okay, now we fry the brains in the butter until crisp. Now while you're frying the brains, uh, make sure to keep an eye on your cream sauce your white sauce. Uh, if it gets too thick, you can thin it out with a little extra milk, and if it's lumpy, just get a whisk and whisk it until it's smooth. But you just wanna keep this warm at this point. You reach sort of a consistency that you're looking for and then turn the heat off while you're finishing the brains. Um, that's the way I'm gonna do it because you can overcook this and make it too thick and too gloopy, and I don't think that'll work out so well. So, I've got the heat off on this right now. It's going to stay warm, and I'm just gonna to continue to fry the brains. Okay, I think they're cooked. So I'm gonna take them off the heat and season with salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Stir that in. And it says nutmeg. Uh, I mean, nutmeg goes with all kinds of things. Nutmeg always goes with the cream sauce. Who knew that nutmeg went with brains? So I'm gonna grate some nutmeg over the brains in the frying pan still. Um, I think that will release some of the oils and make the flavor just a little bit better on the nutmeg. We'll see. Stir that in. Now, um, into the cream sauce, which is still pretty warm, but I'm gonna turn the heat back on just a little bit. I've fried off some mushrooms ahead of time, so the mushrooms go in. And then in go the brains. And 
now this gets served in pastry shells. Oh my goodness, Glenn, it is so hot. Why are you cooking? It's like 37 degrees outside and then with the humidity they say it's like 43, <laughs> so 43 degrees Celsius. Why are you um, cooking? And it's hotter in the studio because look at that temperature gauge. It's hotter in the studio. I don't know. Yes, you need, that doesn't even give you a wax color that you should use on your skis. Okay, you should get forks. Forks? And I will garnish this with peas. <laughs> okay, so um, Should I get a second bowl for me? Uh, I, I think we're just going to taste one off of this plate, and that might be sufficient. So, okay, you're, you're concerned. Full about... disclosure, creamed brains. Oh, something... No, that's just too much, that's too much of a dad joke. I don't think I can say it. Uh, you need brains because you're cooking in this I'm, weather? I know. Dun, I'm, dun, I'm, dun. Dun, 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 yeah. So, um, that's just awful. This Sorry. is served in puff pastry or volivants, and, and at the beginning I said, you know, a lot of these recipes are aspirational. I think cooking with brains in a cream sauce is definitely a depression era sort of people people who you use all the parts you've got. You use all the parts you've got, and the and these parts tended at that time to be used by people who were in the lower economic strata. I think putting it in a volivant or a puff pastry or it says pastry shell um, is the aspirational part. Yes. You would have had this on toast, I think. It seemed. I think you probably would have put this on yeah, toast or, or stale bread. Uh, and the, that's why the peas go in it, And right? that's why the peas and the cream, and the cream would have made the stale bread or the toast. Yeah, the cream peas on toast, cream salmon on toast. Cream salmon cream. on toast, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so I'm just going to dig right in. I'm not going to have any of the pastry. I'm just going to taste the cream and the mushroom. Okay, and so the... this is where I have to do a full disclosure. Creamed things and creamed things with mushrooms, not my favorite flavor. Like, I don't do the cream peas on toast and the cream salmon and or cream of mushroom. So I'm a little concerned just about the cream. Okay. How's the texture? Uh, um, I'm gonna take another <laughs> bite because I don't know if I got brains or not. Or you just got mushroom? I might've just got mushroom. I mean, mushrooms and brains apparently have a texture that's very close. How many brains are in this recipe? Mm. I got brain that time. Okay. Um, so, so you know when you get it kind of thing? Yeah. Get on my, I have my glass on. I can't really see um, if I have any. The flavor, I don't know. When you get a piece of brain, tell me what you think of the flavor. I don't think I have. Oh, well, there's... I'll take one. That, is that? That's brain. Okay. There you go. Mm, I had some in the first one. Okay. It, uh... Watch it. I got it spilled on the counter. I don't want to leave it there. Um, It's kind of like any other type of meat that takes on the flavor of whatever it's been cooked. It's very soft. It's, it's, it's very I get, palatable. I get a fish flavor. To me, it tasted like fish. I can see that because of the texture, because it's very soft. Yeah. Like a fish. Um, I mean, it's actually, even for the cream part, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the I, mushroom bee part, it's actually pretty good. So I don't know that this would be my number one choice. Why not? Uh, well... I think the cerebellum adds great balance to the flavor. <laughs> it does the cerebellum. <laughs> the amygdala. Right. I had I had to add a little science joke there, um, just because why not? The amygdala makes me want to come back for more. Whoa! Uh, so, um, <laughs> I guess what I'm I guess what I'm saying is I'm I'm not a fish. I'm not a big fish fan. Oh, see, where well, I like fish, so that's where we're very and different. And so, because I don't like that strong fish flavor that I'm getting from this, I might not come. It's not the fact that it's brains. After having it, the brains don't bother me. It is that that in the same way fish. I might not have it because I'm not a big fan of the cream yeah. part. But there are lots of options and other things that you can cook with brains. All those types of meats, uh, brain, heart, they're all really all, good and yes. easy to cook. I mean, if you're going to eat meat, well, you, you might as well you have to eat, the eat all the animal. other parts because they're perfectly good to eat. So brains not the easiest thing to come by. Um, I went to three or four <laughs> supermarkets to to find them, but I, I they're out there. Um, these were sheep brains. I think all told, the most expensive part of this meal by far was the, the puff pastry. So if you were going to serve this in depression style... You could have it on toast? You have it on toast and it's like a five dollar meal that would probably feed... Ah, uh, there's enough here for like four people. Yeah, you had peas, clearly, maybe yeah. some carrots. Yeah, I... You're good to go. 
Well, you could make you could, this. You could probably the, fill that with vegetables as well. You could put a whole bunch of vegetables in that and then put puff pastry crust on top, stick it in the oven and have. Call it a pot pie? Pot pie. There you go. Brain pot pie. Make it your own, my friend. Make yeah. it your own. There you don't, you know, <laughs> if you're going to cook with brains, play around with it and uh, different spicing. I mean, a little bit of hot sauce would be great in this. I mean, there's so many other things yeah. you could do to sort of change that flavor and make it. But clearly, it's a base ingredient. It's easy to work with. Yeah. It's, it takes on whatever flavor you put in it, which yep. means that you can do anything you want with it. You could make it with jerk. You could make it with yeah. uh, uh, a curry. So creamed brains get kind of a, an iffy from me, but not because they're brains. And Julie seems to like them, although it's iffy because she doesn't like cream I, sauce. I don't like cream sauce. So. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, see you again soon. Cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Yeah. Oof. I'm going to have some juice. <laughs>